Welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show. My name is Michael Hunlop and I'm the founder of Chaomepic. And in this show, we talk, speak, tell you everything to scale your business. And today we have a very special guest, Lode. Maybe you explain first what you do before I start asking you some tough questions. Uh, my name is uh, Lode. I'm uh, the founder and uh, CEO of Started at KBC. Started five years ago as a uh, small incubator, but then we shifted and scaled ourselves now to the biggest accelerator in um, in Belgium. We have six locations in Belgium and four in other countries. Cool. And one of the big topics, mm. because we keep talking about this, is selling to large corporates. Of course. So today, my friends, we're going to talk about selling to large corporates. So maybe you first say the real problem, because you talk to all the startups, you talk to all the founders, and it's always the same thing they need. Mm. I'm not going to say it. You can say it. What do they need, Lord? Yeah, what do they need? Uh, first, the first thing is, what do those corporates need? And are you talking to the right people? Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you if you talk to corporates as a startup, um, let's 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 just separate scale-ups and startups first. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you talk to, um, and that's and that is a bit our advice to to startups. If you want to sell to corporates, think again. If you're a scale-up and you want to sell to corporates, then there's a big chance that you actually might succeed. Mm -hmm. If you're a startup and you want to sell to corporates and you're selling um, in their core business, it won't probably work. Because they don't trust you, probably. Because you're too small, because the, the risk uh, is too high, uh, losing image... Uh, of the corporate as well. And that's that's a natural thing because usually you're not big enough. Should the strategy deliver. be that you wait until you get big enough until they come to you? Yes. Would that be because Well, yeah, if if they if they know where to find you, yes. But the thing is if you're a scale up then it's it's not about the idea. It's mm -hmm. not about the the product. It's about how far you are and how successful you've already been as a scale up. Usually you will have 100,000, 10,000, I don't know, customers, users. Uh, you'll have your product that's been validated. Uh, you've had a f funding uh, mm -hmm. or, or you've grown uh, organically into, into 15, 20, 25, 50 people. Um, so corporates at that point cannot catch up anymore. And then you become their engine of motiva uh, motivation, innovation, innovation, and motivation, of and course. Mo yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, and and then so so that's why um, you know I we we know a lot of corporates, of course. Some of them are are, are big customers of our, yeah. others are are sponsors, and um, there are very few ideas that I've seen that startups have that aren't already on the shelf in those big corporates. Mm -hmm. You have to understand as a startup that those big corporates, they have thousands of people working with their customers every day. So, and if you're targeting targeting those same customers, chances are big that they already thought of your idea. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's not about the idea, idea, it's about execution. Yeah, operationally. Yeah, so, um, and that's why, uh, and that, that's the point where a lot of corporates fail because they don't know how to put it in the market quickly, they don't know how to validate speed, it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the speed and the and the and, and, and the lean approach. And the knowledge actually. And the, the knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the entrepreneurial mindset. Exactly. And because if you are a startup and you fail or you go to market and you make a mistake, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. You're a startup, it's not that bad to mm -hmm. make mistakes because people know you learn. But if you're a corporate, you got it you got your image you can't to protect, yeah. you can't you can't afford to make a mistake because people say, "Whoa, the image of that corporate." Uh, we expect them to have mm. good products mm -hmm. uh, with, with, with that, that work and are secure and stuff. And if things go wrong there, mm -hmm. um, corporates don't want to uh, take a risk of of losing that. So, yeah. yeah, that's why we also have a program now uh, to do corporate venturing. It's you, you flip it around actually. We, yeah, we flip it around. Yeah, so, yeah. so they so can make separate. Can venturing. I pull you back? I want to look at two things here. I want to quick first talk about the startups, like the, the, the early startups and then and then the scale-ups, a, a bit of strategy. One of the things I, I see, I see when, when, I, when I teach these guys and when I help these guys, I always see the same thing happening is that, one, their pricing is completely off. It's way too cheap for the value they give, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. Two, they actually always end up in the 
with the head of innovation or one of these parts within a large corporate. Yeah. And I've seen that it's really bad to sell to because they're yeah. geared towards innovation. They're not interested in rolling yeah. it out. And it, I mean, I just wanted to know your opinion. You have uh, three things actually mm -hmm. uh, there. Is first the person who who you talk to. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the 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 pricing. Yeah. And the third thing I forgot. But there there will be That's a, a good thing. start. That's right. a good start. Yeah. Let's start with this other <laughs> two. But yeah. there will be a third. Yeah. Yeah. You you can because yeah, you're yeah, a sales yeah, expert. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> listening. I'm listening. I'm learning actually. I, yeah, think, really? you're cool. I think you're doing well, Lola. Oh, thank, you, thank you. Thank well. you very much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Michael, there we go again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, if you if you if you are talking to a SME, mm -hmm. you're probably talk to the owner of an SME, someone yep. who who founded Classic, the company. Yeah. So you do an emotional selling, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you 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 say what well, because that that guy has been where you are as a startup. He has been there like five or ten years ago, so he wants to help and and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Corporate is totally different. But he has a, you have an SME, then you have bigger corporates and bigger corporates you do the educational selling mm -hmm. where you don't talk to the owner yourself but you're in the middle and yeah. yeah you talk to the middle guy who has to sell your product yeah to the owner so, so create the material for his boss yes. or her boss that's that's the key thing they always miss yeah yes I agree. so you have to educate the yep. other guy to sell for you mm -hmm. but in a corporate um <laughs> You don't know as a startup what their real pain is, and mm. the, the thing is, they don't either. Yeah. Uh, so if you talk to s to people, yeah, they, they they meet each other at the coffee machine. There you do a political selling. Yeah. So yeah. you 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 have to make sure you talk to the right people within that corporate who, at a given moment, could meet each other mm -hmm. and say, "Well, look, I've met that guy. Oh yeah, I've met him too." Oh, maybe we could do a project together. Mm -hmm. If 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 you don't have that, it's very hard to sell. And usually, it's a guy from procurement. Um, usually, it's it's people from IT mm -hmm. in a big corporate. Yeah. Because what startups always forget is that if they sell software, it needs to be implemented, mm -hmm. and you always need to pass through IT. And there are people who say, well, but that doesn't run on Windows. Uh, yeah. Do you have these feature features? If you test, then mm -hmm. you're dead. Yeah, or, or their operational system doesn't yep. doesn't support it. And, and add to that the legal side. Yeah, that's that, that's a that's third that party. That's number three. That's number three. Yeah. But usually, startups go and talk to the business, and business is usually enthusiastic about mm -hmm. their about their product. But don't they have the budget? Um, the fundamental <laughs> budget is laying with. Yeah, they have. Uh, that's the that was the third thing. If you talk to the right people, Three and a half. Uh, the right people is not always the decision maker, but also the one who has the budget. Yeah. Uh, so have you, you as really you have to make sure that you need that upfront because some corporates are really um, friendly, mm -hmm. friendly organization with really friendly, helpful people, and they say, yeah, we want to see you. Sure. Come, but it's, it's brain picking. No? But it's, br it's, a, it's yeah. not not only brain picking, but they 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 want to be friendly with you. They want to have have a meeting with you mm -hmm. to listen to what you have to say. But actually, they're not willing to do anything no. with it. True. But they, I agree. They're like, okay, come over and, and we'll have a meeting. And, and then the if you potentially would sell something, you have a sales cycle of twelve months, eighteen months, mm -hmm. sometimes really long. And that yeah. that's where I see a lot of pipelines go horribly wrong. They're all waiting. Yeah, we got the meeting, big party. I said, no, no, endorphins have to come when something's signed, which is like yeah. 12 months down the road. You don't have time for that. Yes, and the thing is, once you once you talk to a corporate, and I, I'm not saying these are bad organizations or bad people, it's, it's just, just the different. way they're structured. Yeah, I agree. And it's, you know, and they're all goodwill. They all yeah. have, have, have uh, they, they, all want, they all want to help. Um, but pricing, pricing, is something that a lot of start uh, startups don't don't um, uh, don't do right because they don't take into account the effort it takes uh, to get it implemented. Mm -hmm. So if you talk to a corporate, they see problems that you don't see. You you as a you startup, you cannot even imagine. You yeah. can't even imagine the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 you are coming with your with your product with your solution, but the corporate sees. We have to implement it. We have to train our people. We have to. So they see problem, 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 problem. Yep. So they see this is going to take time. This is going to take. Uh, we have to put it on one roadmap or two roadmap. We have to do education. Are we? Phew, hell. Yeah. So there, and you don't know that. 
as a startup. No. Um, so they will ask you to do it. And if your pricing is low, you're dead. Yeah, I agree. So that's why some SaaS companies, they say, well, we're, we're going to sell license, but we're going to sell consulting too to get it implemented. Yeah. And usually the implementation budget is... Yeah, and then I, a lot of things I see is a lot of large corporates don't want the SaaS they basically on their bookkeeping, their, the way they do bookkeeping, they want the capex because they want the, the services, and yeah. then they, they move away the SaaS while the SaaS is their equity value. It that that makes the company because it's recurrent. Yeah, it's right. re well, and also, and that was um, something I wanted to add, is um, it's yeah. Well, that's typical for 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 um, for a SaaS, of course. That if you have if you are a startup, you think well, it's software, so we can lower the price because we want to put no. that logo on our website yeah you know? that's we want a to bad idea that's a bad idea because the actually um idea that you put into the heads of those people you're talking to is if you you're too cheap yep. so there's no way something you can must be wrong it. something must be wrong or uh, for okay mm. you're, you're you're selling this for 50 euro or 100 euro a month mm. no way that if we have a problem that you can service us mm -hmm. for 100 euro a month. Mm. That's just not possible. So but we, also, we've, yeah. Yeah, but we, we have startups, we had startups actually, who for uh, exactly the same product went to a corporate, they tried to sell it for 150 euro, corporate didn't trust them mm -hmm. because of the low price. And they said, no. And then they went back after three months and they have, they did their uh, pricing, I think, times 15. And then it was okay. Yeah. No problem to sign. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I do see with corporate sometimes is that they do the opposite game. You say you would come in with a decent price. It's 100K. And then a lot of starters, by the way, they're not used to these type of amounts. I see that a lot. They mm -hmm. get scared and they get really nervous. And you have to find a way to price. By the way, you have to find a way to price your product 100K. It's a very good exercise to do. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one thing that you sell more. No, you have to find other models to do it. And then corporate says, yeah, but you're a startup. You can do this for 10K. I only have a budget of 10K. That's another problem I see a lot. Yeah, that's another that's the problem. opposite one. And then you know you're in trouble because it means yeah. for me that you're never going to touch the hierarchy, right? Because the 100K it needs to go up to the guy's boss to sign. And 10K, he has his own budget. Yeah. And then you're in this trap. You, you can't escape. The thing is, if you are a scale-up, you mm. determine your roadmap. If you're yeah. a startup, the corporate will determine your roadmap. That is a nice statement. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's and it's normal because you're not secure enough. Yeah. You you give them the impression, yeah, but we need you, dear corporate, to actually validate our product. Yeah. They will say, well, okay, we can validate it if you change it a bit like this, which is a pain and a problem. Yes. Yeah. And next corporate will say, well, okay, if we change it a bit like this, and before you know it, you're doing yeah. custom stuff. I wanted to say because I, I made a note, Lola. Sometimes I make some because your point five that you haven't touched yet is the whole customization point. A corporate, it's like if they give you money, they want the exact color they want it. And I think it's a big trap. You have to be really, really careful. So I fully agree for yeah. once in our lifetime. We, we yeah, agree to agree. We, we agree to stuff. Okay. So let's jump to scale ups. I think you nailed the startups pretty good, actually. So I'm now curious of <laughs> scale-ups. Mm -hmm. Because for me, scale-ups, they let me start there. So they actually do one thing wrong sometimes. It's so they have the attention, then they get the trust. People then think, oh, these guys could do it. They have multiple clients. They know what they're talking about. Sounds good, innovative, not too disruptive, not too much friction. And then they forget, for me, always a fundamental thing that is explaining, I call it the structure slide, that is explaining this is how we work. Mm -hmm. It's one, two, three. It's easy. We got you covered. And they forget it. And then you add a lot of friction. And I've seen a lot of executives, they calm their mind when they say, okay, they have done it before. There is a process. And I see a lot of scale-ups forgetting that. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? I mean, do you agree? Yes, I agree. Of course, I agree, Michael. Yes. Thank you, Lola. So we both agree on something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Second <laughs> no. time. Yeah, one, one. Um, yeah, what, what else do I see? Is that if you're if you're a scale up and you're talking to a corporate, you want to sell to a corporate, um, it's still is a difference between are you selling core, something the yeah. core the core business yeah, of yeah. a corporate, yeah. or not. Yeah. Um, if you're if you are not selling something core business, then chances are big that you will sales cycle will be like one month, mm -hmm. maybe two weeks, 
whatever. Yeah. It's, it's possible. You know, big corpus, they do events. If you are an event scale up and you sell software, you know, uh, uh, matching app or, or, or whatever, chances are big they say, okay, uh, we do 1,400 events. Uh, you can do 100 mm. and let's just check it. But then the amount will never be high. The amount will never be high. Yeah. But it's okay f just to sell. But mm -hmm. we don't see the big strategic uh, things there. Advantage, yeah. if, it's, if it's core, uh, and uh, by the way, even startups can sell at that level to mm -hmm. corporates. We've, s we've seen it many times. Um, if it's if it's non if it's non core, but if it's core, then it's something else. And um, a then a corporate will usually also think about: Can we do something more with that than only distribute? And why would that be? Because it's easier to get it approved all the way up. If it's core business, it's core business. Yeah. Then. Yeah, if you're if you're a fintech and and you want to sell to KBC or another bank, yeah, well then you're you're in their core business. Yeah. So I don't believe that those corporates will ever say, well, here's our customer base. Have fun. Yeah, have fun <laughs> yeah. with it. Be very naive. Can no. you just send me all your emails? <laughs> no, they they will try to build a partnership with you, or they will try to buy you yeah. or take a stake or Wh whatever. what about exclusivity that's a classic one i see coming <laughs> I, I always say with exclusivity try to limit it in time yeah i s i add geography and, uh, by the way uh, raise your price yeah. raise your yeah. price and limit it. time yeah. yeah i have this very nice example of uh, approximate actually they all wanted exclusivity and we said okay you can have it for one year only on belgium uh, so time geography and then yeah. i said oh, and the price is going to be three times as high because you stopped me from the market and I said no no it just it was just a question michael <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? so yeah. I, I i believe in saying yes and then give yeah it it's speed. it's um yeah it, it can be a really disadvantage to give exclusivity is a big strategic decision uh, to make and don't yeah. make those decisions overnight talk to people about it because it can really limit your growth the, the other thing I sometimes see is I call or it, it can boost your growth. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah of but course. you have to, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. If you have the big names, mm -hmm. the, the other thing I see sometimes I call it uh, the, the the friction part where um, you, you're a scale up and you go to a large corporate and then they ask you, okay, make me a quote, and then it takes them two weeks to make the quote because they never really think thought it through and then they they don't know what to do with pricing mm -hmm. and then it always ends up the same thing at a certain stage. One of these guys phones me. Michael, what do you think? 50 or 80k? Like, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. It's not, it's not going to work like this. But you need a proper mm. strategy there. So, so this, this being fast and keeping the momentum, I think, is absolute key. Also, focusing on the next step. What I think most companies do wrong when they try to sell is they only they, they think they can close it straight away. No, your step is, I need to get to the next meeting mm -hmm. and keep the momentum flowing. Yeah. Yeah, but follow up very, 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 very good and very yeah. hard. So, how do you um, manage the the political landscape? Because I think that's also a very, very difficult one. So, you so imagine you're the stakeholder, and mm -hmm. I need to get. I, th I mean, I would say you need to talk to everybody. You need to get above because I think that's always a very tricky one. Would What's you pick up the phone and phone the CEO? Or, or how, how, because it's tricky because the guy you're talking to feels like you're you're betraying him. You're if you're a startup or or a scale up, and let's and take both. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm the stakeholder from the from the corporate. Yeah. right. Um, I'll try to assess what's in it for me. How yeah. can I um, be in the picture? Or um, yeah, in real life, I'm not like that. But just suppose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how how can I how can I be be in the picture? How can I uh, present myself? How can I uh, make a good deal out of it? How can I? So how can I ease my work? Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes, you know, and that's sometimes a mistake that, that but you don't know, always know as a startup or, or a scale-up. You talk to a person where you're actually going to make their job obsolete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's typically that's startup your very naive. Yeah. Eh? They kind of go in yeah. and And that's save not you. your best promoter. No, no, no. That's no, that's not your dangerous. best promoter. Yeah. So um, you, have, you have to imagine it like a corporate is like a city and you have to walk the right streets and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and go into the right buildings and talk to the right uh, people. But... In order to, and that's why the sales cycle is usually so long. You don't know who the right people are from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's sometimes why, why accelerators are there because they have a network within those uh, partners. Yeah, put you in front of the right. Yeah, they can. And then, yeah. and then it's a question of value proper. You have to say the right things and then revenue up and cut costs. It's always something like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's something else. Yeah. You have to know what the pain of those 
corporates are. Mm -hmm. And usually it's, uh, okay, we can build up your reputation or your image. We yeah. can, uh, as an innovative company, for yeah, example, yeah. Um, or you will get press out of it. Or we but can that's not really strong. Huh? I wouldn't spend no, no, no. That's something that. add on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But what's really important? We can lower your risk. Uh, we yeah. can uh, we can uh, add um, IP or or uh, shareholder value, or we can raise your revenue. Yeah. Stuff like that. Talking about IP because I think that's something that always comes back, and and you must be experienced in the meantime. Is a lot of these corporates want a piece of IP, so they'll say. If you sell to me, you're actually developing a part of your solution based on my requisites. So basically, you will create IP based on my knowledge. Yeah. What's your answer? Because it's a tough one. Eh? That I, I, it's, a it's also a very dangerous discussion. There again, eh? I think if you're a startup, your um, negotiation strength yeah. is lower than when you're a scale-up. Yeah. Would you do it? Sorry, would you, would you do that? What? Give my IP? Yeah? No. No, me neither. No. I would say, sorry, no, we don't do that. No. And then th the other thing, co-creation. That's an, the answer yeah. to no real IP. Okay, let's do co-creation. And I'm like, yeah, but you guys, I mean, if, let's let's take a bank and them. They're just not set up to do this kind of construction because then you have to do revenue share. It's just so difficult to set up. It's difficult to set up. Yeah, that's um, the problem. It's never really got... And then again, you have different stakeholders. And you have to, you have to make those those agreements up front and you say well w let's uh, uh, co-create uh, something together you can you usually you have an innovative party um, a not innovative party mm -hmm. and a customer yeah customer uh, kind of um, and they and they work together uh, you know, around a problem that that the customer has and, and what, what not and that the non-innovative party has detected and they're looking for an innovative party, a startup, a yeah. scale-up, um, to make it, sexy. Know, make it sexy and to, yeah. to actually even build it mm -hmm. if, if, if they can't. Um, yeah. Depending on the strength of each of those parties, you can make an arrangement. Usually customers don't get anything um, because they want the, their problem to get solved. That's mm -hmm. the win for them. Then the corporate can have a... They can have a new, a new product and the startup or the scale-up can have a distribution model. So if that's value for both of them, you just make an agreement on that. Mm -hmm. um, but IP is something really difficult to, um, yeah. If then you need a fourth party as big lawyer. Yeah, and then to it's gonna cost you a fortune. To, yeah, to, to structure it all. Yeah. Uh, usually the partners that we work with, we they, they say, well, if we work with startups and we do something together, they own the IP. Yeah, I, I also and think, I think it's, it's, it's valuable. It's the only yeah. way, and you'll get a lot of discount on certain pricing. Yeah. You can do other yeah. arrangements so that at least yeah. product becomes stronger. Yeah. Very the other thing al also uh, for the for the corporates that are customers of of, of started, for example, um, all our partners or experts they sign a contract where they can't claim IP. Yeah. Smart. So yeah, so the corporate knows well if we develop a corporate venture or whatever, and uh, we we work with with started it. Mm. it it's IP. So it's like yeah. you're the protecting the. You, you're like the, the chicken sitting on the protecting. I'm, the a, I'm a chicken, yes. You're the chicken. Huh? I thought so this morning. So as we are near the end, <laughs> let me ask you some really. Now you can talk to my front. Hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the chicken. So <laughs> let me ask you some chicken question. Yeah. Lola, because I know you're in a very, very changing agile environment, a lot of pivoting uh, going around and things change all the time. So how do you focus, you as a person, how do you know what to do and what not to do and push away? Um, how do I focus? Um, it's, uh, for, my, for, for me, it's, it's, it's sometimes very hard to focus because you, like you say, you see a lot of opportunities and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a yes guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, I got energy from doing so new stuff. So our previous guest, you know what he said? I really liked it. I have other people to uh, to fix this. Oh. I just need to run. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I f yeah, I have to learn. I I have had to learn to uh, to focus more. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because then you if if you run alone, then uh, you're alone. Yeah, no, no. So true. not nothing nothing happens. True. And like I s I've said before, it's not about the idea; it's about execution. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, started as a team thing. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, I, yeah, so everybody has has great ideas, and I don't want to be the only one to have them. So if you sometimes take a step back in in your spaghetti head, mm-hmm. um, other ideas come up that are usually far more valuable. Mm-hmm. Uh, than so so where then do you get your inspiration? Um, I've uh, I read a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look. Uh, I watch. Uh, is it then? Uh, can I ask? Is it, bis- is it is Star it Trek? Is it business books then? No, hell no. no. <laughs> I also get an overdose sometimes. <laughs> I don't want to read. Yeah. No, 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 Star- no, no. So not Star Wars. Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek. Yeah. Okay. Science fiction. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. a big fan, by the way. So. Uh, yeah, I like uh, Star Trek and all those and all those things. I'm. Uh, yeah. uh, that's how I uh, unwind as well. Uh, yeah. Just. Run escape away literature as they escape. call it <laughs> yeah but the, the literature it's it's usually about um about other people mm-hmm. uh, ah. so their story um fascinates me and the last one i read was about uh or, or from uh, richard branson yeah uh, bio- finding my virginity. I, I, I read <laughs> loss, losing my virginity. Just the title you thought. Mm. <laughs> yeah, finding my. How do you do that? And he found his virginity. No, but it's it's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice book because you had you. Uh, he's he's who he is. Eh? Um, but I think he's a really a great example of an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also a yes a yes person, I guess. So yeah, let's make a uh, aviation company. Okay, so fine. Yeah. <laughs> let's buy uh, Virgin yeah. Airlines. So what do, what do you so think is great. Uh, what do you think is your uh, biggest mistake you've done? And you said I'm never gonna do that again. That was really wrong. Ah, the biggest mistake to make. Uh. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, the first time we tried this interview, uh, <laughs> we have to know it. It's the second time we tried. Yeah. Yeah. First we kept th- telling really bad jokes. And then we couldn't air them, so we had said, "Let's do something really yeah. serious." And and I think you're doing well uh, about well cows and yeah. yeah. You actually uh, know a great uh, joke about no. Yeah. Uh, What's the biggest mistake you made? The stuff uh, you think really th- I should. Ah, uh, the biggest, the biggest mistake is um, is uh, while setting up uh, started, um, going too much, like too many chips in, uh, and then putting family side without oh, yeah. without actually doing this but you just grow into yeah you say yes to a lot of things you you, you try to build work, something work, up work. Uh, yeah. work work a lot uh, events late at night and say yes to everything and go and speak everywhere and then to f- yeah so at a given moment yeah then then yeah you, you know if you lose the family you'll and, and actually those people are there when you um, when you're in in, in deep shit, for mm-hmm. example, they're the ones. So uh, they're the most important ones in your life. Mm-hmm. So I always uh, also to to, to startups um, who work uh, twenty seven hours a day and they Find brag the about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Find them. I say, well, okay, that's great if you work um, that much, but mm, you'll you'll hit a wall if you don't keep uh, your friends and um, especially your your family. Uh, mm. In close, close, and uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, um, uh, one, one, one other thing is that um, uh, average age within Star is thirty-two, so that means that a it's lot older than I thought. Yeah, so it's not the school students uh, yeah. stop with education and then let's see if we can uh, uh, be a startup as a service or startup as a status. Mm-hmm. Actually, the new SaaS, um, but they are th- those are people who are. They're leaving a job behind. They're they have usually families, uh, so living on one of the two income, yeah. uh, income uh, house, uh, children. So yeah, they have a lot to lose. Yeah, yeah. So they tend to work. They go for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So n- therefore, I mean, you need a lot of convincing uh, to get those families aboard. I mean, on mm-hmm. board and, and yeah. keep them on board. So it's very uh, important to. Uh, to really have a good relationship and a good understanding and a good communication channel with um, with the home front. Perfect. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. I think it was a really good deep dive on selling to corporates. Very valuable. So if you want to know more, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'm pretty sure we see Lorden again for a fourth or fifth session. Thank you. <laughs>